let's transition to our main topic. It is Thanksgiving, or possibly the day before Thanksgiving, or something happened to me and it's after Thanksgiving and I didn't get this episode out on time. I don't know. Or you're on Venus in the year 2532 listening to this. Whatever it is, Thanksgiving was adjacent. And we have decided to host a big party, you and I. Mm -hmm. Your family is invited, but put them in another room. Do you mind? Because we have some very important guests that we have to talk about, that we have to, to bring in. And great thing... It's a potluck. Isn't that exciting? Everyone's mm. going to bring something. You know, we're, we're bringing a dish. We'll tell you what we're contributing later. What's more important is what are the guests going to bring? And our guests are famous pop culture uh, characters. And when I say pop culture, it could be books, comics, TV, movies. If somehow you have picked from a line of dialogue in a song and you think, I want, I want Stacy's mom at my Thanksgiving... <laughs> this, this, she's got it going on, you see. Yeah. And she's all she's, I want. I waited so all long. I want, and I waited for so long for her mashed potatoes, which are apparently quite good. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you want her at this not Thanksgiving. Not Stacy's mashed potatoes. Cause no. Fucking, <laughs> not the girl Stacey, for me. Stacy can't cook. The fool. So, but we, we are going to host this little potluck, and Randy and I, we're, we're going to talk about, we've already got our guest list, right? We know who's coming. Mm-hmm. This is this is pre-planning. We're we're getting the party set up. We're we're gonna have a little conversation. Like, who do you invite? What are they bringing? And listen, I've got so much going on. I'm trying to get that. We're host. I'm hosting, by the way. I don't know why you have a house with a family. So you've you've come over. You have brought your family. You stuck them in the side room. And I said, can you put them in the side room? And I went, <laughs> Randy, sit down with me and tell me who you're bringing, and not these guys. Again, please shut the door. Don't don't. <laughs> Don't look at me, Randy's family. I'm not going to use their names. Even though I think you use their names, I try to avoid doing it because uh, I feel like it's fine. rude. I don't know. No, it's... Fine. Audrey Jack, sit down. Yes. Sit down. Don't look at me. I actually didn't want you here. This Love was a you. courtesy. Go in the corner. This was a courtesy. <laughs> shut the fuck up. And then Randy decked me because I told his family Jack, to shut go up. Go play Mike's PS5. In a hit I, no, I didn't say that. Um, I didn't say that. All right. <laughs> fine. Sit this, in the corner. This, this got mean. Anyway. Randy and I need to just sit down and talk about the guest <laughs> list and prep for this. Randy, I just need to know, who are you bringing? Give me your first guest, and what are they bringing to our party? All right. So I am going to pick from, because we said across any medium, right? So I'm yeah, actually yeah. picking across a multitude of mediums, because he's been represented in um, print, television, and movie form. Uh, I am bringing from the grand city of New Orleans Gambit from the X Men. <laughs> That's really good <laughs> because and it, Gambit is bringing dessert. He is bringing oh. creme brulee. <laughs> oh, that's because good. He can make it himself, <laughs> quite literally. I, I was thinking he was going to bring a gumbo or some, you know, heavily spiced side dish. He that's could do great. that too, but it's, uh, we're actually going to watch him make it. Essentially, he's going to bring it, and then he'll put the caramelized sugar. He'll do that oh, all on yeah. his own. Yeah, it's like a table side display. Like uh, he's going to come in, to, like. I, I'm trying to think of what he's going to be like. He'd be like, oh, you don't even know Gambit going to do ha ha time. So, I mean, that was my thought process is like, okay, uh, that's a great, I like creme brulee. It's a great dessert anyway. So it just, uh, and, but we can play card games. He's going to have these great stories. He's such a conversationalist with that great accent. I mean, what's not to like? I mean, I think he's just the life of this party. You are absolutely right. And I'm realizing, oh, no. <laughs> Oh no! I fucked up. Oh! I only thought about guests and what foods they would bring. I did not think about who would be fun at a party. <laughs> no, no, but that's a, some of mine no, are not. My and guest that's, list and is that's terrible, the, and that's part of the point. So, well, oh, Gambit can Randy, help. our I've party's raised, gonna. I, I, s- he will. He will raise it up. Our party might suck. I didn't think about this. I, I, I have I have things that people are bringing to the table. We might be okay. So okay, so I I had actually kind of organized this from like for me like kind of appetizers to dessert, but because you started with dessert, oh, gotcha. I will start okay. with my dessert. I, I, okay. We didn't talk about it, <laughs> okay. but I started with my dessert choice. All right, I'm inviting Liz Lemon from Thirty Rock. All right, to, because my thought was 
it's what she brings is going to be store bought, but she will come up with something and it will be the best store bought item that ah, you've ever had. Nice. Think about the episode where they go to Gavin Villers mansion and he's like, I'm thinking about having dessert brought in. And like John McEnroe was like, I think I know. And he's like, shut up, McEnroe. I got this. And she just starts <laughs> listing like cupcakes on third pie over here also you don't know Sara Lee whatever just do this and I'm just like yeah uh, yeah. I don't know what she's bringing but if I go up to Liz and I go Liz I need you to bring dessert whatever she brings is going to be absolutely fucking delicious and fantastic <laughs> nice is, is my God. but my problem being is that despite being a comedy writer she is neurotic as fuck and is probably not the most entertaining guest to have at the party. Like she's going to want to leave early and she's going to want us to bring the dessert out before we're ready so that she can have some before she goes, or she's going to maybe try to leave with it before we've had it because I, she wants to go and we haven't done it yet. Her neuroses might just be, she might just be cool with like double dessert. Like honestly, Oh, she will. Oh, yeah. She will. Yeah. Yeah. I just worry that she'll be ready for dessert but we're not ready. And she's like trying to move this along. Yeah. It's like, come on now. Fair enough. I realized I, I deleted one of my choices and I didn't go back for what I was going to replace it with because one of my choices was a comic book choice, but I thought maybe I'll do it anyway, even though it's a little bit of a troll. I'm talking it through. No. Do you want me to ping pong and go for it? Or you do your next one. Uh, we'll leave that. I do have a couple of on my cutting room floor, so maybe we'll leave it for that. Like the people that just miss and have to stand outside or something. So. I will keep going because I technically am <laughs> yes. one down right now. Okay, but but I'll, I'll I'll think on it. You give me your next one, and maybe I'll come up with something better than this one. All right, so I'm gonna go. Uh, I know we're going kind of out of order with dishes and all sorts of stuff like that. So I'm gonna go with my you know pre meal kind of appetizers and hors d'oeuvres type deal. I'm going to pick Bernard Beanie Campbell from Old School, which is Vince Vaughn's character. Oh. He's very wealthy, so I'm thinking he's just going to bring like a, a fancy cheese plate or a Harry and David, one of those type of things. You know, just one of these like really nice, fancy, high-priced uh, <laughs> platters. Also, he's going to bring a sick sound system from Speaker City with him so we can rock out karaoke, we can watch football in this or movies in this amazing sound like sound system and surround sound. He's going to bring the goods. So yeah. I'm I'm fully leaning into um, Bernard's other things around him, but that's my... And I also think he... I mean, it's Vince Vaughn in general, but his character in this, very good storyteller, very engaging personality. I think that would be uh, a good person, enjoyable person to listen to. Good guest. That's a really good name. I forgot. What is his actual name again? I had, I, look, I, had look, I had to look it up. <laughs> Bernard Campbell. The problem with, yeah, sorry, the problem with old school and all a lot of those movies, they're just Will Ferrell, Luke Wilson, <laughs> and Vince Vaughn, and you don't call them names. Bernard it, Campbell? Frank, apparently. I wow, how about that? Yeah. What did you say he was bringing up? Keeping a list. Uh, oh, we'll cheese call, plates and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah like a, appetizers. Nothing he made, but just he's he's yeah, yeah. wealthy because of his speaker city. Listen, I <laughs> you can't have a Thanksgiving. I feel like without an hour or hour and a half pregame of like a meat and cheese plate yeah, in my totally. mind. You have to have that. Oh yeah. And I'm not talking a veggie plate with dips. I want a meat and cheese plate. I want meat cheese crackers, and I want to make little meat cheese cracker sandwiches and just fucking go to town on them. And yeah, you can have it. the other stuff and it can actually, you know, it can build it up. But you give me my fucking meat and cheese plate. <laughs> so I will also do my appetizer choice, like my mm -hmm. my pregame. People are coming in. Let's have some munchies and things out for people choice. Although my my one of my main course choices is going to work so perfectly with your your Vince Vaughn choice. I'm very excited, but I don't want right. to jump the gun yet. Okay. I, I'll go with my, my pregame choice, and it's going to be Snoopy from Charlie Brown Thanksgiving Ooh. because he was their chef, <laughs> and you'll remember how upset Peppermint Patty was when they brought out what his main meal was. His main meal, to me, is going to be my munchies ahead of time. It's what, popcorn it's, and root beer? It's <laughs> toast and popcorn and pretzel sticks and jelly beans. Now, admittedly, there were also ice cream sundaes, and he can bring those out for an added dessert later. Yep. But to me, 
the toast, the popcorn, the pretzel sticks, the jelly beans. Just have some munchies out. They'll go nice with your meat and cheese plates. People can munch, mingle, talk. It's a really, it's a nice. Remarkable for the theater system setup that that Bernard brings as well. So Yeah, exactly. Like, people are going to get along. <laughs> so the problem being so far, though, that I have brought a, a socially neurotic woman who probably wants to leave and a dog who can't talk but can cook, thank God. Yes. So, so I, he's a friendly guy, but <laughs> I don't know. And also, I, I feel like I didn't say Woodstock, but is Woodstock assumed as part of the package that I he think came so, with yeah. Snoopy and they're working together in the kitchen? So, like, I, I didn't say it, but I assume Snoopy and Woodstock are a package deal in this regard. I no, no arguments there. I All right, good. Uh, who do you got next? I'll go with the beverages and oh, um yes. so and another I think person that can orate very well will be a good conversationalist and can tell a lot of good stories. I'm gonna bring Tyrion Lannister from Game of Thrones. Wow. He's gonna yeah. he's gonna bring the wine. So <laughs> he will drink a lot of the wine, but he's gonna bring the wine too. You are bringing the party is what you're doing. You're bringing Vince Vaughn and Tyrion Lannister and Gambit. You have, I don't know, like we need to talk because you have cooler friends than I do <laughs> because I'm bringing these fucking nerds to my fucking party. Uh, anyway, keep talking about Tyrion. I want to hear all about. So it's just, I mean, I think he will be, it is very similar, I think, to the effect that Robert California had on all the people in the office. He kind of shows up and he'll have these, he'll tell these long stories that just everyone will be enamored with, but sometimes be a little bit curious about yeah. But Tyrion, obviously being the smartest person in the room, will be able to command the room with stories and all sorts of just levity, I think is, is really good. He'll just be, he'll, he'll be able to take over the room without having to, he won't have to mingle. He will be the attraction. He will be the person that captures everyone's attention i just wanted to i thought of a quote that made me think I, that was just basically slamming the finale where, where you're like he tells all these great stories and i'd be like yeah but who has a better story than brand mm, so i yeah. Just, yeah that was yeah anyway sorry. except I, for everybody i do also think i there might be a slight with Gambit being so cool and suave and debonair, like there may be a little bit of competing storytelling there. And like and Tyrion may get a little snarky and try to <laughs> throw shade at Gambit, which would be kind of funny. It won't happen at all like right away. But as yeah. those two drink and those two are going to get drunk, <laughs> those, those two get drunk. There's going to be a competition about who's like the big dog who's, you know, put it on the table. Let's fucking go. So my next one then is my, thank God, I think my party choice. All right. I have a pretty mellow group except for this one. And not only are they going to bring the party, they're bringing a lot of food. Okay. So I am bringing the the Blues Brothers are coming. Oh, boy. Elwood and Jake Blues. <laughs> they are bringing four whole fried chickens mm -hmm. and Coca-Cola and some extra dry white toast, which really Lots helps too because here, he's man. cooking. Yeah, yeah. No, it's really good. It's and they didn't know, they didn't coordinate. I didn't expect two people to bring toast. That's on me. So but what's great too is that they were gonna bring the party. They're gonna get drunk and eat this food up and have a great time. But then when they see the fucking what I, I if, keep forgetting his name, when they see Vince Vaughn's sound system, oh. holy shit, we're getting a show tonight. We're it's getting great. a I show it. and it's gonna be a good show. So I don't know what they're going to do, you know, how long. I don't know if, frankly, they're on the lam right now and they're just using me to hide out and some really bad shit's coming our way in the middle of the meal <laughs> and everything's just going to get wrecked. I'm not sure, but I think we're going to eat some delicious fried chicken that they, they picked up from a cafe on the way. <laughs> then we're going to get some great music as Jake and Elwood just tear the house down. Outstanding. That's really good. I like that a lot. I also was thinking because I didn't have a drink option. Like yep. I didn't want to dedicate. You were great with Tyrion yep. for booze. But I really thought like I need something. And it's like, oh, if I do Jake, not only does he bring all that fried chicken, Coca-Cola. Problem uh, solved. I love it. So I'm I, I'm going to dovetail off that just because it, it this blends naturally in it. And it's a, it, this is a stupid cheap joke, but it made me laugh. So we I'm going to bring in some more performers that could also oh. 
play following <laughs> i'm i'm gonna invite <laughs> uh the flight of the concords <laughs> Oh, wow. But not uh, like the real life band who has everything together. You're inviting the down on their luck idiots from the show. Specifically. But they could still play, obviously. They'll, they'll play this oh, song. Yeah, yeah. This is this is totally a you just for you and me to enjoy, like because they're gonna play the songs and everyone else will go back in the other room and, and listen to Gambit or Tyrion give and you and I will just sit there and watch. We will be the Kristen Shaw one <laughs> one fan of them. In my mind, Murray is there too, but Murray actually negotiated that they're there as entertainment for the show, but they they are being paid in the meal. Yeah. And they they here's my problem though. What did they bring? Are they just entertainment? <laughs> you ready for this? <laughs> so yeah. they stopped at the grocery store and got like sliced deli meat turkey, <laughs> and that's the turkey that they brought. <laughs> <laughs> so here's my question. <laughs> Are you and I preparing a turkey or did we say, hey, come to this. You're responsible for the turkey. Uh, that may come into play in a minute. So uh, I have someone else that may have turkey involved with theirs as well. But... Okay. So the way I see this planning out is they come in and we're going, all right, guys, you can play some songs in this other room. We're setting everything up. And then Murray comes in and he's like, all right. Uh, I did, uh, we are on the hook for one meal. Make sure we get our meals. Every boys, boys get the meal. Boys, boys, make sure you get your meals. Yes, Murray. All right, Murray. Thank you. We'll get our meals. Thank you, Murray. Uh, oh, oh, and I did not forget. I also have, here we are, the turkey on Thanksgiving. And he pulls out the thing and we just look at it and he goes, oh, that's all there. Thank you. Deal. You know, I just very understated. So I, li I like that the way that I had it in my head, which I, I think I like yours better. What is that? There, without Murray, just the two of them show up, and Brett pulls out this one like measly package of turkey and goes and goes, I brought the turkey, and then Jermaine pulls out the exact same like brand type of turkey, and then they look at each other and be like, "Why did you bring the turkey? Yeah, I thought you were good. like they just argue over the fact they brought this like crappy store bought deli turkey, but it's the same exact one. <laughs> we can meld these together." Where instead of Murray handing over the turkey, Murray goes, all right, boys, uh, hand him over the turkey. And then Brett pulls it out. And then Jermaine goes, wait, but I thought I was going to check. He goes, and then Murray just goes, you both bought turkey. We don't have the money for both of you to have bought the turkey. <laughs> yes, that's Only it. Only one of you was supposed to have bought the turkey. <laughs> that's, that's the bit. <laughs> um, it becomes a real band crisis that they both spent money on the cheap deli turkey. Again, from a actual dinner entertainment and you know making a cohesive party standpoint, this this would not work at all. But for your and my entertainment, perfect. Like this is this is strictly yeah. a just for Randy and Mike thing. And <laughs> right, and and listen, we are hosting this party. We're hosting this party. We can now. We know who they are. Even if you know. Liz Lemon comes in and is like, who are these two jabrones? <laughs> and we're like, they're fine. They're going to be good. You're going to like them. And I still think that Bernard could, like, he could talk to anybody. So that might be an, an interesting side thing. He can go talk to them and, and not, uh, you know, demean them too much. Also, this is this just struck me, thinking about who's sitting at the table, and I know we have more to go. There was a brief moment where I thought it was kind of a sausage fest. So far, we only have Liz there. Um, but then it hit me, and I, I don't know how else to say this. Liz and Elwood Blues are going to fuck. I, 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 mm. There's something about him being the quiet, understated one. Think about Twiggy in the Blues Brothers movie, where he just kind of smiles and says a couple dumb things and gives a thing and like does a little whatever. And also, when you think about the scene in the fancy restaurant where he's eating like a pig and being stupid... Yeah, that's very Dennis Duffy, yeah. and and I think <laughs> he'll hit on Liz. They'll like Jake and Ellen will both hit on Liz. Probably everyone's gonna hit on Liz because so far she's the only woman, and they're all <laughs> drunk idiots. But if she puts out for anybody, and I'm not saying she would, but if she does, so far I think it's gonna be Elwood Blues because he's the most, he's the least obnoxious of all of them in the midst of this and that little quietness i think would get it it does seem like yeah this it would be a very liz thing for the most suave debonair like you know so gambit is just putting on like oozing the charm and she's just not he's she's giving her nothing 
Like, <laughs> she'd just be completely put off by it. Yeah, back off, Creole. <laughs> and then, uh, and then Elwood just walks up and be like, pretzel? You want to like a pretzel? Mm-hmm. And she's like, I do like a pretzel. <laughs> and I, I don't know, there's something, I am hooked on the fact that for some reason, if anyone's going to hook up at our party, it's not going to be you and your wife. It's going to be Liz Lemon and Elwood Blues. So... <laughs> <laughs> nice well i mean i didn't invite oh, oh never mind keep going uh don't worry about it everything's fine i just had a thought okay um who's your so i think uh, that's i'm i'm oh that's you oh my next one because i'm four down right but i'm four yeah okay i thought of yeah i thought of snoopy as a dog being quiet i thought of elwood being very quiet and jake while he's the leader and talkative one and the party animal in the movie, he's also, they're the Blues Brothers. They're mm-hmm. very stoic. They're very quiet. And I thought, oh, no, I'm not bringing a lot of conversationalists. And then my next one is Tran from New Girl. <laughs> it was, <laughs> has two lines in the entire series, <laughs> one in season two and one in season seven. And I am having him bring his lasagna which, you know, they raved about. And don't say that Allie got sick because Allie's the only one who got sick in that episode. I don't think there was food poisoning. I think something else happened. No one else got sick right. from the cooking that Tran did. <laughs> and, 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 I, and Nick raved about Tran's lasagna. He was like, that was amazing. You brought that lasagna. It's so good. And I just, I looked at that little dish he, or that dish he was walking out with that they had devoured. <laughs> And with that happy look on his face when Nick Miller said how good trans lasagna was and the way that the trend just brings kind of that, that Zen vibe to things. Right. And I just thought I want him there and I want that lasagna. So, so Tran is going it. to come. Yeah. To, to our Thanksgiving. And I feel like you and he somehow will have a bond. You won't see it coming. <laughs> you won't see it coming. You'll be frustrated. I'll have said something stupid and annoyed you about something and then you'll just look over and he'll give you that half smile and not say a word and you'll just start bearing your soul to him mm. and you two will have a real heart to heart during dinner or after dinner before dessert it'll be a really nice moment for you guys and then you'll bring the family over and invite them and you guys will all kind of sit down together and you'll keep talking and uh, <laughs> it'll be it'll be really nice i like it Especially because pe- it'll, I'm getting some serenity apparently from from Trent. That's what I'm saying. Stuff. You're gonna feel good about it. I do. I do also think you know, in, in going circling back to the Liz Lemon thing, I think it's gonna be a contest between Elwood and I think Brett. I think Brett's gonna have a. a, a Brett's got a shot, definitely. Yeah, she death definitely. So if you look at, I, I, I realized she wound up marrying you know fucking James Mar or James Marsden, one of the Marsdens. Uh, in the show and you know so she wound up getting her more movie star good look but he was yeah. still a goof yeah she likes that goofier loosier subtler thing it's just are you gonna get your jason sudeikis style loser more of a loser with brett or are you getting your dennis duffy style more of a loser with uh with elwood right fair uh who is your next choice uh and then this is it right because we did five I have not done my last one. Okay, so for my final, it is a duo, and <laughs> will not help for the gentleman because it's the duo. But uh, I'm going to pick Leslie Nope and Ben Wyatt from Parks and Rec. Oh, I love that! Yeah, what they are going to bring because Leslie Nope is going to find a way to get a spin on a modern classic. She's going to take instead of chicken and waffles, she's going to find a way to make turkey and waffles, and bring that Ooh. as her course. Because it's uh, because she loves waffles, but also because I love Leslie this. would find a way to make something that is perfect. She's also that the other nice thing is she's going to bring painstakingly personalized gifts for everyone that's there that will be perfect for everyone. Also, even they're going like to bring. She got the. How did she get the guest list ahead of time? We're just talking about this just, right now. She just knows. I don't know. She just she had everything prepared just in case. She had gifts prepared. All right. No, I'm excited. And also, here's my question. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Can I ask you, can I ask you a question, Randy? Is there going to be a moment when she's doing all of this? She's unloading this beautiful dish of turkey and waffles. And everyone's like, my God, look at this. And then Ben just goes, and I brought something too. Oh, that's... And he just pulls out... <laughs> Cones of Dunshire. <laughs> yeah. No. 
Now what? it comes to Dunshire. He brought Calzones. Oh, I do. Okay. Did Ben, and then Leslie gets mad at him. She's like, I didn't, why did you bring those? I didn't tell you to bring those. Why would you, like, Leslie doesn't get mad except for, it's why would you bring food. those? <laughs> why? Why? We already brought, why are you bringing these? Oh. If you're going to bring these, just bring a pizza. That's brilliant. I like that a lot. No, a I lot, hope he lot. brought Cubs of Dunshire. Yes. We'll play Cubs of Dunshire. But I was wondering if he brought secretly, because he thought he was helping and very excited, Calzones. I just, yes, that's, that is a great additive, which I did not have. So that's, that's a wonderful ad. Uh, I just thought Cones of Dunshire is a lot of fun based on the people that are at this, at this yes. party, just because like Tyrion will treat it like an actual, you know, war going planning and none of it will make any sense in that regard. And if everyone hates it, you know, Gambit could just, you know, <laughs> blow it hard, up. I blow was going to say, <laughs> I think Liz, uh, the Concords, Tyrion, uh, uh, Leslie, and Ben, they will all play. Tron, I think, would play. You'd never see him do anything, but he'd be there. Yep. I don't think the Blues Brothers, Gambit, or Vince Vaughn, again, I refuse to say his name because I already forgot it. Is, is it Bernard? I have it written down. Is that it right? Is Did I write it down it is wrong? Bernard, yeah. Okay. Beanie, it, it, I guess. I don't remember them calling him Beanie, but it's a... But neither do I, but he's Vince Vaughn. I don't think uh, Vince Vaughn, the Blues Brothers, or Gambit are even willing to try to play. They're out, they, doing, they get, they're out doing karaoke. Yeah, they, it's fine. So Yeah, they get drunk. They do other things. You're absolutely right. My final pick. Remember I had said I had a comic book character I was debating, but I didn't think I was going to do it because the, the joke, I don't think this is going to be my pick. Do you mind if I give you a maybe but then solidify my pick after? Yeah, that's fine. Sure. My maybe was Green Arrow, Oliver Queen. And chili, because the joke, long running joke, literally since like I I researched it because like I kind of remember I was like, was this just a '90s thing? Is this one off? Since the '70s, the joke has been Green Arrow makes a chili so spicy and so insane that the only person who can eat it without revolting is Batman. <laughs> so, like Green Arrow makes a chili that is just so intense that. There's a splash page in 90s. This is why I remember. They did these comics in the 90s called Secret Files and Origins. They were one shots and they would do little stories, but then they'd also have single splash pages of just lore items and funny lore bits and things. And in the 90s, they actually published Green Arrow's chili recipe. And in the recipe or in like the splash panel around it, they have all of the heroes like vomiting and talking about their weaknesses and then Batman's eating it calmly going I could use more crackers and I'm just like oh god but I was like do I really want to invite Green Arrow and his <laughs> kill the party chili like I don't know if I want to aside from the fact that I think it's funny to talk about so what you do is you invite him yeah um but that is given to anyone that hangs on too long anyone that stays too long <laughs> they get some Green Arrow chili and then that gives me an excuse to run away. I like that idea. My other idea, and this is this is the one where I'm like, oh, oh my god, I haven't thought about it. Is we're talking about everyone here. I, you know, I know, I don't, I don't, I don't have a significant other. I'm here <laughs> hanging out. It's nice that you brought your family. I still have one more person to invite, and I would love to just bring Obi Wan Kenobi to this party and introduce him mm. to your family. I, don't, I think I see where this is going, but I would go and listen. Which Obi Wan Kenobi? I've invited, I've invited Obi Wan maybe from while he looks in his Disney Plus series or some series of films in the early two thousands. And listen, you don't have to worry about anything because Obi Wan follows his Jedi training, right? I didn't invite one of these other characters that might look similar to Obi-Wan. I know what you're doing. <laughs> Obi-Wan's Obi -Wan's not going to do anything that's less than noble. He's not going to break his Jedi vows. If other people at the party pay him more attention than they should, and other people at the party seem really interested in him and maybe test the boundaries of what's acceptable for a Jedi... I don't know. I you said Green Arrow was your troll pick, not this one. <laughs> no, no, Green Arrow. Sorry, Green Arrow is my troll pick for the other people at the party for the food. <laughs> this is definitely my troll pick. <laughs> Cho choosing when I went oh earlier, it was I realized I could choose a character that looks like Ewan McGregor and introduce him to your wife at the party mm -hmm. and see how that goes. Lovely. 
So, but I was respectable in that I chose a character that would not do anything. I'm pausing because I've lost you. I'm pausing because I've lost you. Uh, okay. And you're back. Hello. Did you, I thought you rage quit because I invited Ewan McGregor to the party <sighs> to mess with your head and I was, and not flirt with your wife. It's the, it's Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan's not going to flirt with your wife. She might flirt with yeah. him. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen there. I, I didn't, I was looking at other characters. Yeah. Listen, I didn't invite train spotting uh, Ewan McGregor. I didn't invite Christopher Robin or, uh, or evil Roman Sionis Batman villain uh, Ewan McGregor. I was actually. I was the big fish guy. That was actually the only one I thought of that if I invited to might fuck your wife. That was the only... <laughs> I didn't go with that one. I actually thought about, like, I need to choose a character that wouldn't do anything. I don't want to disrupt your marriage. That's terrible. <laughs> but I want to have some fun with this. I want to see how this situation plays <laughs> out. So don't invite Big Fish, <laughs> Ewan McGregor, because he's too charming. And he's a young man, and he's going to make some things happen. But noble Jedi... Owen, Owen McGregor. Owen, Owen McGregor. McGregor. Yeah. Is this a, yeah. Owen, noble Jedi Obi Wan Kenobi is not going to do anything, but your wife's going to swoon. How's it going to go when when we bring him in? I'm going to walk no. in and no, be like, "Hey, I'm... hey, come on over, fam." No, are you saying he's not invited? I'm not no, allowed. I'm just. I, green this, arrow? I, this will completely be. I'm sure what happens. This will be me with Tyrion out singing karaoke in the other room, singing Nazareth's "Love Hurts" or something like that. And uh, you know what? I regret this. It was fun for me. It was fun for me, but I don't like seeing the pain you're clearly in. I caused you a deeply painful, emotional yeah. situation. So I'm going to not bring Obi-Wan. I will commit to Green Arrow and his terrible chili. And and at the end of the night, when people, just like you said, when people aren't taking the hint that it's time to go, we're going to go, listen, I know dessert's over, but we have something that, you know, how do you get it after dessert? You don't necessarily the chili after dessert. How do you get people to leave? <laughs> Whatever it is, be like, you know what? We forgot to serve Green Arrow's chili. Everybody take some. No, but that's kind of like how like Thanksgiving goes sometimes, right? Like you you have the, even though you have the dessert, and then for some reason, even though you ate God knows how many calories and all this other stuff, we're like, oh, you know what? We still have Green Arrow's chili. Yeah, what else we got? <laughs> like that does seem to creep in there. I don't know what it is during the third football game, you know. I would like to read uh, Green Arrow's chili recipe to you because, as I said, it was published in the 90s. So this is Ollie's stupendous chili recipe, just like mom used to make. In a large saucepan, brown ground beef and spices together until flavor blends well. Drain fat. Add onion, green pepper, and garlic and cook until soft. Stir in undrained tomato seasonings, tomato sauce, and water into a large pan. Let's simmer for several hours. So Green Arrow has to come over <laughs> early or he's doing this at home. Occasionally stir. Ten minutes before serving, add brown sugar, Tabasco sauce, and beans. Serve with help yourself bowls of grated cheese, oyster cracker, and chopped onions. Here's your ingredients. Pound and a half lean sirloin chunks, two teaspoons of cumin, two teaspoons of paprika, one teaspoon of cayenne, cup of minced onion, cup of chopped green pepper, optional it says, two teaspoons of minced garlic, teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper, one and a half teaspoons of salt, half teaspoon of dried basil, crushed. Tablespoon of chili powder, California <laughs> chili powder. Tablespoon of Gemhart chili powder. Tablespoon of New Mexico okay. hot chili powder. One sixteen ounce can of tomatoes cut up. Tablespoon, Jesus. Two, yeah, two eight ounce cans of tomato sauce. Two sixteen count cans of sixteen ounce cans of dark red kidney beans, partially drained. Teaspoon of brown sugar. Tabasco sauce to taste. Half cup of water. Garnish as said with cheese crackers and onions. Would you eat this chili or was um, it too much for you? It sounds like I would. Are you Batman? Batman could eat the chili. Well, would that I was. Uh, the I would want to like taste the chili powders on their own just to see. And if it was like, you know, if I put a little tiny bit on my tongue and it's like, you know, all <laughs> of a sudden I can't feel my tongue just from that, I'd be like, oh boy. But I feel like you cook it down enough. If you're cooking it down for several hours with all this stuff. I, I'm I'm surprised that <laughs> menu or that recipe promotes all this. 
growing right. up it and everything. It sounds it's pretty just, tame. I mean, it sounds like it's hot, it but it doesn't sound like tame. it. You know, I was expecting, you know, habanero, jalapeno, ghost pepper, like all these other things in there as well. And here's here is my thought on this. Now that I think about it, is the the recipe is technically his mom's mm-hmm. recipe, right? To me, what I think it is, is it's probably a good recipe, but Ollie can't cook <laughs> and he fucks it up. It's like a cup of chili right? powder. Like I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think he's just oh, bad maybe. at cooking the chili. So maybe we, we invite oh. him and we're like, Ollie, I'd love that, your mom's chili recipe. And he's like, oh, I'll make it. And I go, no, no, Ollie, you relax. <laughs> Green Arrow, you relaxed. I'll make the chili. Just are you cool with sharing the recipe? And I'm sure he'll be great with it. And you can also, I'll make the chili. I mean, if you're, you can kind of taste it as you're going. With like a lot of things, you could alter the brown sugar to offset it a little bit. You could throw, you could put a little bit of vinegar yeah. in it to offset it. Like there's some things you could do to offset the spice. But, um, Mike, you're going to be disappointed in me, and I'm sorry. I'm yeah. genuinely <laughs> so hungry right now. Um, anyway, uh, because I'm not as comic smart as you are. No, no, uh, it's fine. What is, what does Green Arrow do? What can he do? shoot arrows he's hawkeye okay oh okay gotcha he's 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 dc i was hawkeye. expecting something else got it. Oh, okay gotcha. no who's he aligned with is he usually aligned he's, with other people? the justice league okay. he is uh two two notes of this he is the first uh, canonically the first member to join the justice league after their founding in every iteration even when they reboot history usually as dc often does the team founds whoever's in it Green Arrow is usually the next guy who has joined, is how they always say it. They invited him that. The other thing is the reason they they did that is he, canonically, joined before Batman. Batman has never been a founding member of the Justice League in any iteration. Because when you think about Batman, he's not really a team joiner. Even the Bat family, he keeps them at length. He's a symbol. Did you watch Arrow, the CW show? I did not, no. Okay. Was that about, that was about him, I'm guessing? Yeah, exactly. And it was that early 2000s and they eventually got there what's great about the evolution of arrow is they start out not calling him even arrow and then by the end he's wearing the bright green green arrow like they Mm. they started before they were willing to embrace comic books and then they ended with everyone loving comic books so they turned him from like (laughs) we really just want to do dark gritty dark nolan batman to at the end it was kind of awesome and like he it was great by the end where he's a real comic book character it's a nice evolution of it actually but all of that being my point that i was trying to get to and i keep dancing around as i think of other things to say <laughs> is he is hawkeye in that he has trick arrows and is an amazing archer and does all these things but he's as rich as bruce wayne in most things oh, he runs okay. queen industries and there's actually long-running jokes he's lost his money more often than not so there's jokes about how he's lost his fortune a lot of times. But at the times where he has published his money, or published, at the times where he's published when he has money, there are jokes about how he has ripped off Batman because they know each other's secret identities. And so, like, he is at one point built a cave and he called it the Arrow Cave. And Bruce was like, Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? He's like, Well, it's a good idea. I need a place to go. So, my point being is that he's good to bring to this because. He'll make a halfway decent chili, and he'll probably bring other stuff because he's rich. He'll bring things. He'll be okay. Love yeah. it. He'll be a, he'll be a part of this. And also, listen, I'm guessing if Green Arrow's coming, Black Canary is coming because they're a long time couple. And listen, you know, I'll just put it bluntly: she's a babe. So you know, I'm gonna say. And also, uh, she her power is like supersonic vocals. So I think her singing is probably gonna be off the charts. It's gonna be great. This would be a rocking yeah. party, man. Like you, I brought a couple decent people by the end. I feel okay with it. So I'm going to go with that. And I'm sorry I even entertained the idea of toying with you and the the <laughs> fragile, fragile nature of your relationship. <sighs> I just thought of the idea to do something that I thought would be very, very funny. <laughs> you're, you're, you're misconstruing my I know. <laughs> reaction I know, to I know. what I did. I was, I was amused. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, finally, you know what we didn't do? What are we bringing? What are we, what food are we contributing? I'll tell you. I, I used to host Friendsgivings. I loved doing them. I had like five mm-hmm. uh, when I was in Connecticut. And I say this was before we were actually in any way kind of friends. So I don't think right. it came to one. It was not personal. <laughs> but I mm-hmm. I cooked most of it. But the thing I always thought I did the best oh, nice. and the thing I thought I was quite good at is I make a mean twice baked potato. Mm, nice. So I season it well. You do the mashed potatoes. You scoop it. You put the, the I do some cheese seasonings, a little milk, creamy mashed potatoes, put them back in the skin, rebake that in the potato skin, 
I make a meat and twice baked potato, and that is my contribution to this. What what are you bringing? So, and it is a divisive dish, but I don't care. I'm bringing it anyway because there is a really bad and wrong and icky way to make it. I'm bringing green bean casserole. Oh, yeah, I don't like green the, bean uh... casserole. Of course, you would be the guy who fucking brings. Somebody always brings green bean casserole, and it never gets ate. Like one quarter gets ate. You and one other person will eat it, and you'll bring oh, a fucking tray, and it'll be a quarter, and then I have to clean had... it up and throw it away. You haven't had the one, man. Like it's so good. You you limit you limit the cream of mushroom because that's everyone's yeah. mistake. Is they put too much cream of mushroom and it's goopy and you make it but if you if you limit that and what you do you put pecans in it and you actually end up putting some flour in too so it it, it lets it be a little more what i just i just don't like green bean casserole i'm listening to you describe it <laughs> you're i'm looking at you funny because you're uh, describing like <laughs> nastiness and trying to be like no i i you you put lip you put I, lipstick on a pig and you're like it's fine. I had another. I right, no keep fine. going. Keep I running will, out your recipe. That's what I would bring. I wasn't but cutting I you am... off by the way. You were describing it. And I didn't cut you off. You just saw me looking at you. <laughs> so please finish how you do you this did. recipe. In disgust. No no no. For but the I, people I could be out there, finish this. the recipe. I, I could. But this is a, this is a we're co-hosting it, so I can be diplomatic on it. So and we so can, can I bring I'm not going to bring. I'm. No, 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 because I had another one just in case. I do case. want you to actually so, finish what you would do to make it better because I didn't cut you off. You stopped yourself. What would you do to no, finish it? No, 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 and then everything else is pretty much what you know, green meat casserole. The the French fried onions on the on the top, which apparently is not is, is the end-all, be-all of it. You actually have to kind of toast them so you make them even crispier and crunchier to put them on the, on the top. All right. They are better that way. It's more like a... It's more a true casserole than a soupy mess that usually is otherwise. So, okay. And it is usually a soupy mess, which is... My my backup to that is... Uh, and we usually are working with a boxed version, so I'm not going to pretend like I'm making it from scratch or it's within a bag. I'll bring the stuffing because oh, yeah. you can't have things. Can't have and stuffing, and so. listen, I'm not fancy. I am... Like the commercial, I like stovetop stuffing. And if you blend yeah. stovetop stuffing with some of the, like take a little bit of whatever might be natural, some juices and stuff like that, and you infuse the box stuffing with the stuff from the turkey, like have Leslie bring over some of the, you know, whatever that mm-hmm. comes with it and then infuse that with your stuffing, money. So good. Love it. All right. All right. I'll be, again, for the sense of giving thanks, I'll bring the stuffing. I'll ha- I'll make the greamy casserole and leave it at home, and eat it there because I'm the only one that likes I love it. it so. I love that. <laughs> so there's a couple of things I wish we had. Um, just there's there's a couple of dishes like we have a very good lineup of food here, right? Mm-hmm. I will say that maybe the choice baked potatoes count, but we don't have any mashed potatoes and gravy. We fucked that up a little. Right. Uh, mac and cheese would be nice to have. You don't have to, but sometimes people bring a good mac and cheese. Have you usually had that? I, I don't, we rare, very rarely had that in my Thanksgiving growing up. My or... friend's givings always had it, but there's a guy <laughs> we worked with in Connecticut named Mike. He's an editor. Uh, and he made this banging bacon mac and cheese that he brought every year for mm. five years that like he brought a bigger pan every year because it was just so fucking good. And I miss yeah. it. He, and the what he did, he did the shells, but he didn't do little shells. He did those big open shells oh, yeah. where he could grip the sure. bacon and the cheese. And like, and it was just, it wasn't just he threw bacon and cheese in there. It was seasoned well. It was just, he made a damn good tray. Right. And it got me to the mm-hmm. point where I was like, I feel like I want mac and cheese now on Thanksgiving. But <laughs> the only other one I would say that I would personally want, if I didn't do the twice baked potatoes, do you have a preference? This is This is a hot button issue for me. <laughs> if you were to go sweet potatoes, if I said sweet potato casserole, there's two methods of preparing a sweet potato casserole. One I consider the superior way, and one I consider the gross can we not way. And what would you? I am not a fan of the marshmallows. If you're that's the go gross there. can we not way, to me. Okay. I, give me some brown sugar, and I'm good. That's just it. You give me you you whip up those sweet potatoes, brown butter, sugar, maybe, yeah. butter, and you top it with usually I think pecans, and you bake that all together. Mm-hmm. Oh. You can throw some cinnamon yeah, yeah, on there yeah. too. It's pretty good. That's a sweet potato casserole. You keep that fucking marshmallow shit out of here. So, <laughs> if I made a second thing, 
I would probably make that. There we go. We've, we've, we've come back together. Yes, I'm so our... glad. I'm so glad we <laughs> did so, it. Yeah, so let me run it down again. I'm going to run down yes. the guest list, the dishes. So uh, I'm going to start with yours. Vince Vaughn, Bernard Campbell? Did I read Campbell? I think... This has been sure. the most difficult thing of this entire episode. Vince Vaughn from old school as character name is bring in cheese plates, probably like a meat and cheese plate, munchies, things to yep. go with, you know, a little high salt, high fat, delicious protein, be good. And then on the other side, Snoopy and Woodstock are coming also, and they're bringing toast and popcorn and pretzel sticks and jelly beans and munchies and things. Loving loving the pre-meal uh, things that's going on. Listen, as people, as people roll in and the guests show up yep. and we got, you know, the big game on the TV, and hopefully the Lions aren't losing, and we're, we're enjoying the day. Oh, uh, I mean, fingers crossed. You yeah. mock it. You mock it. The Lions no, are I'm destroying not everybody. I'm this saying day. that it'd be nice to... <laughs> listen, I grew up in Michigan. It's nice to see them doing well, but I also had 27 years before leaving of them losing, I think, 25 <laughs> years is, is, is what it came down to. So to me, the Lions losing on Thanksgiving is the real tradition. So, <laughs> with the bag over your head, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, but you know, you're, my uh, my uncles and my cousins sitting around eating meals on TV trays, looking depressed at the football <laughs> game. That's how it works. That's the that's the day. But that's a great, you know, games are on. We're cooking. People are arriving. Good lineups. Then uh, we'll move to. I think Tyrion shows up, yep. and he's like, "Listen, I brought wine." I brought booze, have some now, have some with dinner, have some after, take what you want. We're going to have a good time. And it's like, yeah, thanks, Love Tyrion. It. Let's get this party going. Then I think uh, the next person to arrive to me, I think, is Tron with his lasagna. Sure. Uh, he, he, he sets it down. He sits quietly. You seem really drawn to him in my mind. I don't know why. You just you talk. You show him the family. It's really nice. <laughs> You guys, you guys are having your time together. I don't know why. I think maybe you play chess. I don't know. Something happens. We have multiple chess boards in our, so I'll bring some. Oh, good. Okay. There you go. Bring a chess board. Uh, and then next up, things start getting a little more raucous because the Blues Brothers show up. Ooh. And they bring their four whole fried chickens, their Coca-Cola. <laughs> they throw the extra toast on with what Snoopy already made. <laughs> and then right after that, the Concords roll in, and they maybe start playing some music together ahead of time. Not the full show yet, uh, but because Bernard's still hooking up the sound system. Sure. That'll be coming after dinner, probably. The, we have the awkward interaction with the turkey. We're like, what are you doing? But don't worry. Right after that, Leslie'd open uh... Ben Wyatt walk in. And she's like, I got this. And we set up the turkey, the waffles. He awkwardly introduces some calzone, <laughs> sets it next to Trump's lasagna. And he's like, look, hon, I'm not the only one who brought Italian. And she's like, uh, <laughs> I love you, but uh, and it's just how it works. Uh, uh, we set out our dishes, our stuffing, our twice baked potatoes. Green Arrow and Black Canary come in and they bring the chili. And I look at Green Arrow and I'm like, is this the chili I've heard about? And I was like, I thought we said maybe I'd make it with the recipe. He's like, no, I brought it. I was mm. like, all right, well, set it over here for now <laughs> behind this other thing. Don't worry, it's here. Don't worry. We'll just, just put it behind this tall thing, and we'll get to it eventually. I promise. It'll be fine. Thank you so much for coming. Dinah, that's Black Canary's on. Dinah, you look great. Yeah. It's nice to see you. It's good to see you. Then uh, Gambit and Liz Lemon both show up, and Gambit doesn't seem to have a dish. He has bags. <laughs> And we're like, what are you? What are you doing? He's like, Gamma going to take care of all of this. Don't you? Don't you? Gamma going to take care of all of this. Don't you fret none. This. Yeah. <laughs> don't you fret none. Gamma got it all taken care of. You enjoy your meal. You enjoy the meal. You sit down. Gamma going to take care of you. And then Liz comes in and is like, Well, I brought three hundred cupcakes, and we're eating all of these tonight. And anything you don't eat, I'm taking yeah. with me. This is not negotiable. These are coming home with me. I really bought these to take home. Eat what you can, I guess. But these are coming with me. They are very good. Nice. So we all sit down. We have a great meal. Gamut makes the creme brulee. We have a big party, rock and karaoke scene. The Concours, the Blues Brothers. We go nuts. I, I think Ben, Ben Wyatt gets weirdly drunk and tries to explain comes to Dunshire to us and just it does not go not well. Not before he karaoke's and... letters to Cleo, but. <laughs> <laughs> so good. 
Uh, and then uh, Snoopy eventually retires to the top floor. He might, <laughs> like tries to lay down and goes to bed early. And then you just see him poking his head out occasionally because he's a dog and he's trying to sleep. Yeah. And we're just going nuts. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then, and then yeah, he's like, rrr, rrr, rrr. Well, Snoopy, thanks for bringing what you brought. But fuck, man, we're trying to have a good time here, okay? It's just how this works. And I think we're going to have a fine time. Right. Uh, any other party moments? Any other things? I think we've done well. This uh, <laughs> this actually this blends together quite well. I, I think this uh, is going to be an entertaining uh, togetherness part. I think I, I think it's a it's a good I, I meal think of we're thanks. Gonna have, we are going to have such a good time. I'm I'm loving this. So you know that's really all we have today. This is a short one. It's a holiday special, Thanksgiving special. We we we've. Uh, stuffed this as much as we can <laughs> stuff this uh the the christmas season will begin from here on out we've got definitely some christmas ideas coming it's very exciting where i believe we're going to rank our christmas carols at some point you are going to force me to watch a christmas story <laughs> and we're going to talk about it maybe most wonderful time of the year maybe i'll love it we'll we'll, we'll be doing a lot of christmas media i'm really looking forward to a lot of what we're going to be getting mm-hmm. into this season 